Mom and Dad, did you know that Malia Obama, the former president of the United States' daughter, took a gap year? So why can't I? <laughs> One of the biggest hurdles to taking a gap year is telling your parents and trying to convince them that it is a good idea. In this fourth video in my gap year mini series, I'm going to help you to understand why they are concerned but also how you can convince them that it is a smart move for you to make. Let's begin. So one thing to understand about why our generation's parents are so hesitant on gap years is because they are from an era where you kind of needed to go to college and get a degree in order to get a good job. Many of them never got the opportunity to go to college and so that is why they feel more of an obligation to send you there because they're only looking out for your best interest. What they don't realize is that nowadays, college degrees are becoming less of a prerequisite to someone becoming successful. But if you do know what you want to be and you need a degree for that, then 100% go and get that degree. I personally would like my doctor to have attended Harvard, not necessarily have gotten all of his knowledge off of YouTube. Parents will have the same concerns when it comes to any gap year idea. So let's just start off by debunking some gap year myths. Number one, your family might be worried that you won't go and study after your gap year. You'll actually be more focused on what you want to study when you go back to school after your gap year, so you will perform better. Or you'll just realize that you don't want to go and study further, and in hindsight, college might have just been a complete waste for you. Right out of high school, a lot of students feel pressure to go into university and study because of their peers, society, and even their parents who make it seem that the only way that they're going to be successful in life and get a good job is if they get a degree. I know that many parents put a lot of pressure on their kids to go and study further and especially so the firstborns and especially so in South Africa but that's only because they were never afforded the opportunity to do so back when they were your age. Starting college after a gap year will give you a fresh perspective on life and will help to keep you more motivated on achieving your goals because you've had the time to think about what is it that you really want out of life without being constantly distracted by exams and assignments. It's the best way to figure out your passion and be happy with your chosen field of study. One of the worst feelings in the world is studying something and you have no passion for it whatsoever. You can get a real taste of what it is that you want to do before you go and commit to four plus years of studying by taking a gap year that is related to your field of study. So if you wanna be a teacher, then go teach English in China or even be an au pair and look after kids. Number two, your grades will fall if you take a gap year. This isn't true. Yes, you might need to remind yourself how to do certain things, especially if you have a math module, then you'd probably benefit from doing a refresher course. And there's probably going to be some study tips and tricks that you had in the past that you would have forgotten that you just need to remember again. But in your first year, they're pretty much going to start you off from where you need to be. And they're probably going to teach you things in a different way, in a different manner than how you were taught back in high school. So it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world to have forgotten those old ways because you're going to be learning new ways in any case. Number three, that you have to be rich in order to take a gap year. There's actually gap year options where you'll get paid for your gap year. So teaching English in China, uh, working at a summer camp in America or, or pairing in Europe, they all pretty much pay for themselves. And if you don't want to travel, you could always get a full-time or part-time job in your home country and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Parents can be worried because they've just heard of a ton of horror stories regarding the au pair program. Yes, there are horror stories, but there's horror stories with everything. And I'm, I'm not a horror story. I was a good story. <laughs> you can tell them that you're not rushing into the whole matching process and that you're going to be taking your time. But that's also why you want to start early. But also you can say to them, listen, why don't you talk to the host family with me and they, maybe they can ease some of your concerns. There's nothing wrong with that. I've heard of it done quite a lot, especially if the potential au pair is like 18, 19 years old, like when they're still very young, that's usually what happens. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. They might not want you to leave them and be so far away on your own. This is just them experiencing emptiness syndrome and it's a struggle for them to come to terms that their baby is all grown up. You need to explain that you're old enough to make your own decisions and that you're only looking for their support. Be mature and say that, listen, I want to get out of my comfort zone. I want to see what I'm truly capable of and I can't do that while being here at home. That's why I need to do this. I need to do this for me. 
I suggest that you watch this video and the previous videos in my gap year mini series with your parents because then it will ease their concerns quite a bit and just let them know that they can email me at info at thebropair.com if they have any other concerns or any questions or whatever it is, let them know that they can email me and I will be sure to help them out. So that's it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and it gave you the confidence you needed to speak to your parents about the idea of taking a gap year. Please do me a huge favor and like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on the fifth and final video in my gap year mini series. If you have any other questions or concerns, please leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to get back to you and help you out. I hope you have a great day and I shall see you in the next one. Bye.